Miata is always the answer, or so I've been told. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, do me a huge favor, go down and subscribe before we get into this video. Today, we're going to be talking about my Miata once again. Before we get into that, I do apologize for not uploading. It's been quite a while since I've really made a real video. I got some videos coming out in the near future, so we're back to the normal upload schedule. Just missed one video yesterday, so it kind of seems like I haven't uploaded in a while because I uploaded a short. But let's get into the topic of this video. Why did I buy this 1990 Mazda Miata? Especially when I already have a convertible two-door roadster that I would argue is better than the Miata in every single way. So why did I buy this if I already have the much better car? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Let's get into the car and let's talk about it. Got the car fired up. I have it taken apart a little bit. Bear with me on this. There's a video coming out um, where you guys will see why I'm doing all of this. Uh, stay tuned for that. But that is actually reason number one why I bought a Miata. They're easy to work on for the most part. Everything is pretty straightforward and the cars are relatively simple. And compared to my other cars, which are super complicated to work on, this is much easier, so I'm not really too intimidated to work on it myself, which is a huge plus because then I can do stuff like this and fixing my car myself, and then it'll slowly uh, let me be able to work on my other cars as well. Now reason number two is how the car drives. So, it's super loud in here right now because I don't have anything you can just see right through the car. But Miatas are really fun to drive. They don't have a lot of horsepower, but you see people tracking Miatas all the time, which is kind of my goal with this car. Miatas are really nice at handling and it makes an inexpensive track car so some more reasons would be that it's affordable super affordable and you can do a lot of modifications to it and also you can track them and they're really good at handling so both of those are major pluses and kind of what I want to do with this car being able to track it is a major kind of benefit for me because I always wanted to get into it but I'm a little too scared to use some of my more expensive cars to go to a track day without really having too much experience driving on a real track. So I'm not gonna be risking some of my more expensive cars, cars that are gonna be a little harder to replace if something does go wrong, even though this car did not come very easily. And what do I mean by that? Well, these cars are starting to become kind of hard to find and they've appreciated significantly. So why would I wanna buy a car that's appreciated in value? Well, the thing is, I don't think this car is going to depreciate again, which is another reason why I kind of bought it. I looked for a good deal for a while and I found this car, so I think I did pretty well with it. And this car, potentially, by the end of summer or next year, if I do want to sell it and get something else, I can get my money out of it and I've still enjoyed the car. So that's another big reason why I got it, because I, I, can, I can sell it pretty easily and still either come up on top or at least break even on what I paid for the car and just kind of have the running costs associated with it. That brings me to another thing, a major running cost right now. Gas has appreciated to over $4.25 per gallon on an average throughout the US. This car does a lot better gas mileage than my Mustang does. This car can get me anywhere between 25 to 30 miles to the gallon, depending on how I drive it. The Mustang gets me anywhere from 25 to 14 miles to the gallon based on how I drive it. Of course, this car is not a highway cruiser or anything like that. It, it drives 80 miles per hour, but it sits at four and a half thousand RPM. 55 mile per hour zones, 50 mile per hour zones are perfect for this car. And you know, I think I can enjoy that and deal with it and kind of have this as a good summer daily. Along with that, I can produce YouTube content with it. So I think all of those things combined, this car was a pretty good pickup for me for the summer at least. I don't know how long I'm going to keep it, but I'm definitely going to keep it for a little bit because I am enjoying it. Um, you guys will see the future videos that are to come with this car. I have a video going out right now that I'm actually working on. As you can see, the whole interior is taken apart right now. So yeah, that's kind of why I bought the Miata, my thoughts behind it. I'm possibly going to make it into a track car and kind of do some light track days and get myself behind the wheel of a track car and get myself some lap time and lap experience and i think this would be the perfect car because it's not a ton of money and in the future we can possibly be thinking about upgrading from this as a track car to something with a little bit more power not that you necessarily need power for the track which is why this is like a perfect car because it doesn't have a lot of power but it has the handling potential which makes you a better driver so i think overall it was a major win. The gas mileage is a huge thing as well. And plus, I mean, look at the car. Everyone loves a good Miata and it's got the flip ups. It, it's such an iconic look with the NA. And that's the reason I kind of went for the NA. The NB I could have got, it's probably a much better car, faster, newer in every single way than this car, but it doesn't have the pop-up headlights. 
And I think that's a very big character of the car. This car has a lot of character, a lot of soul. And I think this will be a future car to hang on to. It's not going to appreciate it all too much from now. But who knows what's going to happen with the future of the values of these cars. Because they've only gone up these last three years. I think they're kind of steadying off a little bit and they might be coming down. But I don't see them ever being under $5,000 for a clean example like this one ever again. This car is absolutely filthy right now, but I am working on it. There's a couple of problems that I had. I told you guys all the issues that this car had a couple of videos ago. So let's get it back to the garage. You know, it, it has, it needs a little bit. I also had the whole center console taken apart and the car is super loud inside. Also, okay, it didn't do that time. If I click this again, it's like anytime I want to show something broken in the car, it doesn't break. All right, well, in one of my shorts, my last short, the last video that I posted, the Miata light was uh, blinking up and down only on one side. It does that when the car is running and I try turning the light off when I'm driving. One of the many things I'm working on right now. Those are the reasons why I bought a Miata. Another reason, Miata is always the answer, or so I've been told by multiple people. And uh, I had to see what the what the hype was about and get myself a car, just another car to experience. And this one I think I can um, do pretty well on in terms of depreciation. So at this time, I just it, it was a perfect time for me to pick one up. Also, I had been looking for a Miata for like a year before I bought this car. It just took forever to find a decent one for a good price. If you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe. And go subscribe to the motorcycle channel as well. I'm posting videos on there. Um, that's all I have for this one. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.